<laughs> that, that, oh, that was refreshing compared to that. <laughs> but the goon uh, we're working on, we just did the uh, the Kickstarter and uh, to raise money for an animatic of the film. So uh, the Blair Studio is working on that right now, and hopefully after that, with the success we've had with uh, 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 crowd fundraising and and how good the uh, test reel is looking that hopefully uh, we'll get some more backing and finish the film. We're trying to get to convince them there's an audience for animated films that aren't mainly for children so it's be become a big challenge um, but we're all re very confident that we'll eventually get the funding and, and be able to finish the film. It's a sad reality. Uh, there's, um, in, in the U.S., you really uh, can't get much attention for your book unless there's a television show or a movie or something else being made out of it. Uh, it's all uh, Marvel and DC superhero books. No, it seems like everyone, yeah, since I've been working in the business, everyone has been like, oh, comics are dying, comics are dying. Especially when, when I first got into the business, it was at the end of the middle to end of the 90s, uh, which in the U.S., there was this big boom where comics were selling millions of copies, but they didn't, uh, they didn't care how they were selling them, so they were selling millions of copies to 100,000 people. So it was a big speculation thing where all of these people were buying comics, but they weren't reading them. They were buying them for the collector's value. So um, once they started selling these millions of copies, went back and you know people were like, oh well, I'm going to sell this now. And it's like it's not worth anything. I have boxes of that back here. You know, it's only worth something if it's rare. And uh, so then the the bubble bursts and um, comics became you know, the, the sales started to drop and drop and drop. The good thing now is that uh, you see uh, there's beginning to be a spike again, but um, it's from actual readership. People are actually reading the comics. Um, so that's a good thing. It's, I, I feel better about comics right now than I have in a while. Everyone buying comics now, it seems it's more, uh, this story is great, you know, uh, and they're telling people about it. So, uh, that would be the good. I said, it, it is changing, it is getting better, but there's still a lot of, uh, not a lot of willingness to try new things. Uh, they just want to rehash the same thing over and over again. I was at a a shop the other day and picked up a catalog and was flipping through it and saw a story coming out from Marvel and I read the synopsis of the story and was like wait I I read this same story when I was 16 you know I, I liked it you know I liked it but I'm just like we're just doing this you're just rehashing the same things over and over again and if Jack Kirby were alive today trying to do something new no one would pay attention to it because they only want to look at the stuff that he did in the 60s you know you can still pull out your Led Zeppelin records and listen to that, and that's still good, and you like it. But you can listen to something new, too, at the same time. You know? It's not necessarily a bad thing. I think there are comics for kids, and there are comics for adults. I think that's the way it should be. There should be, just like movies or television, there, there's a genre for everyone. And I think the broader we can make that, the better. Well, I, t I tried to do that with my own book, the Chimichanga, that uh, I wanted it to be fun for kids and something that an adult could enjoy too. Um, it's not, it's not being, uh, it's the, the storyline is over, but Bone is the perfect example of that. It's something that I know all of the, uh, you know, co other comic book artists really enjoy it and then, you know, you can give it to your kids too. 
I don't think you learn any of it by yourself. I, I'm, I'm self-taught, but that's only because I took initiative to study other people. I was constantly um, getting books and uh, studying the way that uh, other artists technique. Um, if you took away that, if I had none of that to work from and just gave me a pencil and said, okay, teach yourself how to be an artist, um, I'm sure it wouldn't be very good. <laughs> Early on, Bernie Wrightson was one of my big influences. Um, uh, and from him, I kind of backtracked into other artists because I would read an interview with Bernie Wrightson. He would talk about the EC Comics guys and then, you know, I went from Bernie Wrightson to Jack Davis and Wally Wood and Frank Frazetta and, you know, just constantly, go, this guy was influenced by this guy and this guy, you know, and just kind of learned comic history through that. I think Mike Mignola is, uh, you can't dispute the fact that he's changed comics. There's so, you look at before he became very popular and comics after he became very popular. And even, um, there are so many artists that have been influenced by him and just the, um, the economy of, of uh, style where before Mignola really became popular, um, everyone, it was more cross-hatching, more cross-hatching. Everyone's putting lines all over everything and how much could you fit in there and really for no reason. And then Mignola came along and it's like, okay, this is black. This is positive, this is negative. Um, and was really this uh, doing his own unique kind of exaggeration of anatomy. And now, um, even guys that don't necessarily draw like him, you can see how the, the design of the page has been influenced by him. To me, it's, it's all one and the same process. So I don't, um, I will definitely uh, <laughs> at times have an idea for something and go, oh, I don't want to draw that. So <laughs> I might scale it down a little bit, but uh, that's about the only time. I've had some days where I do nothing but um, uh, kind of bang my head against the wall and try to work out an idea and it's like if someone saw me they're like that guy's doing nothing he's sitting there but and there are other days when I'm you know I, I get up and I'm you know just constantly writing something or you know uh, write and draw or just draw or some you know depending on the deadline I'm working, you know, 18 hour days or something or staying up till four in the morning trying to get something finished. And so there's no real typical work day for me. I, I don't uh, have a set number of hours where, you know, I start work at nine and end at five. I tried it. I, I wasn't very successful at it. And so that what brought me into doing my own comics. Um, I've been very uh, outspoken about uh, creator-owned comics and people doing their own work and, and try and get new, new ideas out there. Um, I would feel slightly hypocritical if I went back and was like, okay, well, now I'm going to go draw Batman or something like that. Not that I would say I would never do that, but I've got too many ideas of my own. Hmm. There's, there's levels of that. I don't know. <laughs> there are really bad movies that are entertaining, and then there's bad movies that are just bad. See, the, the other thing is, if I think it's bad, it just, I just forget about it. It's forgettable. I love, uh, well, there, there are a ton of really bad movies I love. The, the, the old, like, um, B science fiction and, and horror movies where there are, you know, guys in rubber suits and everything like that. Um, I think if you look at some of my artwork, that definitely has influenced me, the uh, just big kind of goofy looking monsters. There's a lot. <laughs> I, love, uh, I, love, I love cheesy horror, horror movies, you know? I love all of the Friday the 13th movies. <laughs> I love, you know, uh, yeah, 
uh, all the Godzilla rubber suit monster movies. I love all that. Um, I do love the movie Fried Green Tomatoes, which is not. <laughs> which people, I would tell people that, and they're like, but yeah, I do like that movie. Uh, I think I'm working on it. <laughs> I think my I had a dream to to be able to uh, write and draw my own comic, and somehow I've stumbled into that, and and I'm able to do it. So um, I think the the goon was was my dream job, and I, I feel very lucky that I'm able to actually do it. Um, well, right now at this moment, I'm working on um, uh, a new Goon miniseries and uh, another uh, Chimichanga book. I really like the uh, Alt J that that uh, album he just came out with. I thought it was really amazing. A friend of mine said, oh, "You should try this," and I listened to it once. And I thought it was good, you know, it was all right. And then I listened to it again. And every time I listened to it, um, it just got better and better. It's been my, my like go-to record this past year. Anytime I was like, I don't know what I'm listening to, Alt-J. I would probably be sweeping floors or hanging drywall or something like that. I would be doing some form of construction probably. Uh, that's what my dad did. That's what I did over the summer, so <laughs> sad but true. That's probably what I'd be doing. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>